Welcome back to Altitude University, Hunter here. And in this video, I'm just gonna go through my favorite drone settings in the DJI GO app to show you exactly what you need to be able to get the best quality image possible. Let's jump right into it. So first things first in the DJI GO app here is if you go into the top right, you're gonna see these three dots and we're gonna to wanna to go to the top part right here, make controller settings. And I'm just gonna go through everything I do. So just duplicate it and you'll have the best settings possible. So first is return to height at current altitude, make sure that's on. Go down, return to home altitude is gonna be at 30 meters, which is almost 100 feet. So it'll come down at 100 feet. Beginner mode off, unless you are a beginner, but beginner mode, it's gonna restrict your speed and you're not gonna be able to fly too far. After that is ma enable max distance. I turn that off. And last but not least is advanced settings. I haven't adjusted anything in here, but if you want to, you can totally adjust these to your liking. Um, next is visual navigation settings. So first is enable visual obstacle avoidance. You always want this on to avoid accidents. So you can go through and read these for yourself, but just make sure you always have these turned on. Next is the radar chart. So you want this so you can actually see real time radar. Um, this is gonna be things like geofencing and anything in the air that you need to avoid flying with. And next up is the bottom auxiliary lighting. And this is gonna bring a light when you're taking off. When it's darker out, your drone's gonna sense that it's nighttime or darker out, you can take off and land. Uh, keep in mind, you actually can't be flying at night unless you're a part one pilot and you passed the extra test. Under advanced settings, you can take a look more in depth at these. Um, I haven't changed any of these, just make sure all three of them are on. It's mostly just to make sure you have obstacle avoidance working perfectly so you don't hit anything with your drone when you're in the air. And then third on the list is the remote controller settings. So let's go through this. So first is remote controller calibration. If you press that, you're gonna be able to calibrate your drone to your liking. Um, this is gonna make the sticks work exactly how they need to work when you're in there flying. Next is stick mode. So you can adjust this to your liking. Mode one actually has the right stick moving up and down, whereas mode two has the left stick moving up and down. So choose the one that you like. Um, the reason I like mode one is because I played a lot of video games when I was younger, so this was super helpful for me to fly going up and down with the right stick. If we go back here, there's the LCD screen introduction. You don't need to do anything with that. Charging mode is a pretty cool option. If you wanna use this, what it's gonna do is if you turn it on, it's actually gonna charge your phone while it's plugged in, which is super cool. Um, just keep in mind that that's gonna drain your controller battery a lot faster when you're charging your phone when it's connected in. And then you can customize buttons in here. You know, There's a lot of different things you can do in here, but I don't really adjust anything else in there besides sometimes the charging mode if my phone's gonna be dying while I'm flying. Next up is image transmission settings. This is all pretty extra information you don't need to know about, but it is good to know. You can do the channel settings, the channel mode, um, status, you can see how fast the downlink bandwidth is, the transmission quality that you're seeing on your screen from your drone's camera, and the image transmission settings. You can change that from HD to normal if you want, if your image quality doesn't matter to you too much when you're flying, but I always recommend having the transmission settings to HD so you can see crystal clear image, mostly for safety. Next up in there is the aircraft battery. Pretty cool, you can see this. There's four cells in the battery that are charging. Uh, critically low battery warning is gonna be 10%. That's gonna automatically bring your drone back no matter where it is. Next up is the low battery warning, uh, which I put to 15. It usually is at 25%. I change it to 15 just because I'm super comfortable with my drone and I know how close I need to have it in that radius to make sure I get it back safely. Next up is smart return to home so always keep that on because what it's going to do is when it gets to that low battery warning your drone's going to automatically come back and land for you uh, flight time when you're in the air it's going to actually say how long you're able to fly and then you know you can see the voltage for the batteries on the main screen if you want to i in my opinion that just kind of adds a little too much extra to look at so i wouldn't do that uh, you can go into details things like that how many times you charge that specific battery which is pretty cool um, and then gimbal settings really important here so gimbal mode I have on follow and then advanced settings. I have max gimbal pitch speed at 15 and smoothness at 20 and then enabled the gimbal tilt upwards to 30 degrees. So 15 for the speed is gonna make it slower. So it's a nice cinematic movement. And then the smoothness is when you let go of the gimbal, it'll actually slowly go into that rather than immediately stopping. So 15, 20, and then the gimbal tilt at 30 means rather than it stopping here, you can actually tilt it up 30 more degrees to get cool angles. And then last but not least on here is general settings. So I changed the measurement unit to miles per hour and feet 
because I'm in the United States, so it's easier for me, but you have metric and kilometers and meters. You can see a live broadcast, which is pretty cool. So you can stream to Facebook, YouTube, um, or a custom one like RTMP right there. And then, you know, there's extra things for the map here, unlocking license uh, to be able to fly in authorization zones right here, which is very cool. You can catch your video during shooting, so it'll record and save right to your video. You can record audio with the video cache, and you can even have a Mac, you can change the Mac's video cache if you have a lot of space on your phone. And then you can clear that as well. So if it's taking up space on your phone, click clear right there and that'll clear you for you. Um, you can change your device name here and you can change from full screen um, with doing single finger or double finger. You're wrecking me. Ow. And now let's go into my actual camera settings. So if you go into manual mode right here, press that and you can adjust these. So that first one in the top left, I always set it to manual. ISO, you always wanna keep as low as possible. I'm not gonna to dive too much into these actual specifics right here with ISO, aperture, shutter speed, things of that nature. I'll do that in a separate video. It's in our course, 14 Day Drone Pilot Pro it's as well, where I go over more of those specific details, but I'm not gonna cover all that in this video. But let's actually dive into more of the specifics here. So if you press the camera, video size right here, 4K high quality. So I always shoot at 24 frames per second at the highest quality right here. So 4K high quality is the highest quality possible I can get from my camera. So I recommend doing that as well if you have the option. I'm gonna go back here, video format. I like shooting an MP4. You can use MOV if you want, but I prefer MP4. And then white balance right here, I set to custom and I have it at 5600 Kelvin. So the further left you go, the more blue your image goes, and the more right you go, the more orange it goes. So I found 5600 Kelvin is perfect for my color temperature. And then if I go to style, I have standard. And then for color, D-Log M is gonna give you a flat image. You 100% wanna use this over HLG and normal. Um, for videos, it allows you to color grade it and give you a way better image when you're bringing it into post and editing it. For camera video encoding, H.265 is just a newer video codec, which means when you are recording, um, it's reading and writing a lot faster. So when you're filming, it's faster, and when you're editing, it's faster. So if you have the option for H.265 video coding, use it. It's just newer technology, which is gonna make your life a lot easier. And then image format, so pictures, you have the option for RAW, JPEG, and JPEG plus RAW. So RAW gives you a big file that's great for editing and post. JPEG is pretty much just a preview of that same image, so smaller file, you can't color it as much. So I like doing both, so I have JPEG to preview it, and then RAW to edit the colors of that same image. And then if we go over here to the last one, the settings for, if you're taking panoramas, you can save it as a JPEG or RAW. And then the original hyperlapse, you can save as JPEG or RAW. RAW as well, save that. And then go through these, um, the LED headlights, auto turn off, boom. I don't need a histogram, uh, lock the gimbal when capture, enable AFC mode on. Uh, overexposed off, auto sync HD photo off, video caption off, hyperlapse video frame off, grid none. The center point right here, I like this little circle. You can change this to your liking and you can even add a color, but I like the circle. It lets me know exactly what's in the center of the frame. Anti flicker, I have off, I have no need for that really. File index mode, I have it continuous. Peaking threshold, I have it none. Um, in the storage location, obviously to my SD card. I don't want that on my internal storage of my drone. You can format your SD card there. You can format the internal storage and you can reset all of the settings as well. So that's a run through of all of the specifics I have on my drone, everything from the camera settings I use to the specifics on how to make sure you have obstacle avoidance fully enabled. If you go through and replicate all those settings, you're gonna not only have the safest flight that you possibly can have, but also the most efficient with the highest image quality possible. We'll see you in the next video. Dude, I just got wrecked. Ow, my feet. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna learn more about unlocking your drone's full potential and becoming a confident drone pilot, then be sure to check out our course, 14 Day Drone Pilot Pro. It's a speed learning program for beginners, teaching aerial photography and video editing, and our students are absolutely loving it. I'll link it in the description below. Make sure to click that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.